It's marketed as the world's rarest and most expensive coffee. This is no ordinary beverage. It's made with the help of a wild animal known as a palm civic cat or luwak. The coffee this animal produces has become a global hit. But has it come at a cost to the welfare of the luwak? This is wild. This is captive Kofi luwak. As supply tries to meet increasing demand, a cruel battery farms the reality of this must-have coffee. Oh no, his foot is complete. Is it completely missing or just rubbed raw? We go undercover to gain access to this guarded industry to expose coffee's cruel secret. We're undercover in Indonesia, posing as businessmen filming our trip for a home video. We're also rigged with hidden cameras. How many do you want to see? The big one. Big one. Yeah, how many? As many, all of them. Indonesia is the world's third largest coffee producer. Here, coffee is big currency. No more so than the unusual beverage I've come here to investigate. In the 18th century, plantation workers realised that palm civets, or luwaks as they're also known, were wandering onto their plantations and eating the ripest coffee berries. The digestive system of the civet cat couldn't handle the stone inside the berry, and this would pass right through their system. Once it was watered down or dried in the sun, it would produce a unique tasting and highly desirable coffee. Now Kopi Luwak, or Civic Coffee, is the world's must-have beverage. Retailers say the Luwak's diet of fruit and only the ripest coffee berries produces a caramel-tasting coffee. Despite being branded as cats, they're related to the mongoose. Some species are endangered. But many of those who sell Kopi Luwak reassure their customers that the coffee is sourced from the plantations where the Luwaks roam and forage freely. And collection is strictly controlled to ensure the civet isn't harmed. And that the animal's droppings are collected from wild jungle civet cats, handpicked by farm workers and not from caged civet cats. Many retailers across America and Europe claim only 500 kilos of this coffee is produced per year. Luwak droppings are Indonesia's coffee gold. Where do you come from, sir? London. Okay. Yes, here on my holiday. In recent years, it's become the talk of dinner tables, bars and cafes around the world for those who can afford it. At 75,000 rupees a cup, that's five pounds, it's a big chunk of an average weekly wage here. At that cost, you can have it filtered at your table. It's up to 60 pounds a cup in America and Europe. What was once a free drink for peasant coffee farmers is now a luxurious and expensive beverage. Oh, you can drink java produced in part from, and wait for this, the back end of a cat. You can imagine the number of nasty names people have for this coffee. Crappuccino is one, for example. A few months ago, we told you about a very rare coffee called the Kapi Luwak. And this weekend, some people in Bolivar had a chance to experience the coffee. It is smooth and delicious, and um, it's an experience. Former coffee trader Tony Wilde was among the first to bring Kopi Luwak onto the Western market. I ended up on sort of late night TV, there were feature articles in, in national newspapers. It just went completely mad, out of nowhere, catching me totally by surprise. And from that, every coffee company in the world 
basically realised if they wanted to get press attention on their company, Copy Luat was the way. We are here today to talk about poop coffee. It's coffee made out of poop. You know what? Mm -hmm. I like it. Copy Luwak. It's been the subject of much talk in the US media. Great material for headline writers and British comedians. Rich, aromatic and pure. Our coffee is harvested at source and then... But Tony Wilde believes the amount of Kopiluwak available doesn't add up. The figures don't match. He fears Luwaks have been battery farmed to meet demand. The coffee trade relies on quality and consistency over whatever quantity it is that you're selling. So the best way to do that is to it's keep them caged. in captivity. From the coffee trade's point of view, caged coffee is perfect. A lot of the marketing for Kopi Luwak says there's only 500 kilograms in existence globally at any one time. Absolute nonsense. That's the, the, the whole reason everybody regurgitates that story, is that by being incredibly rare, you can keep a r ridiculously high price on it. So how is supply meeting increasing demand? Is the story of picking droppings from wild Luwak really a myth? Are potentially cruel intensive battery farms the reality? We're travelling from the port city of Medan to the town of Takangon in Aceh, in North Sumatra. The heart of Indonesia's Kopi Luwak production. To investigate, we've had to create a convincing cover story to gain access to one of the most guarded of industries. We've created a fake British luxury coffee company and told suppliers were keen to import Kopi Luwak. Our first meeting is with a collector. He is the middleman, collecting Luwak coffee from numerous farmers. He then sells it in bulk to exporters or direct to retailers. The sale of Luwak coffee appears to be not what is written on the tin, in this case anyway. Michelle, this is wild, and this is captive Kopi Luwak. Does it taste different to uh, wild Kopi Luwak? So is, is uh, captive civet coffee cheaper than wild civet coffee to buy? Another collector with more samples of captive Luwak coffee. He shows me happy snaps of his colleagues and the farms. That's a lot of Kopi Luwak. Is that yours? I wanted to know more about captive Luwak coffee. Believing I'm keen to place an order, the collectors agree to take me to their informal cooperative of farmers. So this is Kopi Luwak. In the plantations of the Aceh Highlands, the dark secret behind one of the world's most expensive coffees is revealed. Civic cats, caged for coffee. Oh, let me, can, I, can I take a photo? Oh, there we go. Gosh. So it's quite a lot. Despite some retailers' claims that only 500 kilograms of Kopi Luwak is produced per year, this farmer says he helps to supply that much per month to the collectors. Gosh. It's big. There were five captive animals here, two recently died. The farmer insists the animals are well cared for, but he admits that a forced diet of coffee berries 
is taking its toll. Nampak dia kalau udah mau mati. Luar berat. Itu darah. Mati mati sehat dia kan. Just two kilometers away, a second farm, and more complaints of illness and distress hampering production. Dia waktu kita lepas tu pergi perkerakan dia akan sembuh di di alam liar lagi. And then you recapture them. Yes, you recapture them and put the gates. So what do animal welfare experts make of Kopi Luwak's secret production line? These animals are solitary in the wild. They don't want to be this close to each other. Simple as that. Dr Neil de Cruz of the World Society for the Protection of Animals is a specialist in animal behaviour. Yeah, look at that, just miserable. Absolutely depressed and miserable. These wild animals have, have uh, you know, behaviours they, they need and want to express. The cages are completely barren, they're filthy, um, there's nowhere for them to climb, there's nowhere for them to properly hide, um, there's nowhere for them to, to really exercise in the way they, they'd need to. So that's why you're seeing lots of the kind of symptoms there, the abnormal behaviour, the pacing, um, in, in many cases the kind of frenetic, uh, you know, kind of frenzied behaviour patterns. But also some of them just clearly look depressed. But can there be such a thing as an ethical captive luwak operation? This farmer has built a large fenced-off area for his luwaks. Here, the animals have much more freedom and look healthier. But there's a problem. Luwaks are solitary animals. In another area of the enclosure, sick and injured luwaks are caged. This one has lost his paw. We're told it was attacked by another luwak. Oh, no. I mean, is... His foot is complete. Is it completely missing, or just rubbed raw? And they're, they're just left in there. There's, you know, he can he can hardly walk, and nobody's doing anything. But injured luwax can be easily replaced, <coughs> readily supplied by poachers. Fifty have been condemned to captivity at another Takangon farm, one of the largest operations we've seen so far. They were all bought from poachers. So they eat the, the coffee berries and then they... Oh. In fact, the farmers call themselves the Luwak rescuers. The animals used to be killed to stop them eating precious crops. Kalau di teknik dibunuh itu kan sia-sia, saya. Setelah tahu kita hasilnya, artinya kopi Luwak ini laku, lebih baik dipelihara. His neighbour runs another large operation. And more signs of repetitive behaviour from stress. And there's a new addition to the farm. Oh, look, there's a little baby one here as well. I found the baby. There was another surprise on this farm. This luwak is a rare breed called a binturong, or bear cat. Under Indonesian law, animals can only be taken from the wild under license and with a strict quota on numbers. Laws animal welfare campaigners claim are largely ignored. The misery for Indonesia's luwax begins here, in their natural habitat. They're night creatures and they're in search of food. But humans are also out hunting. These illegal poachers used to sell luwax for meat. Now they have a new client who wants them alive. Coffee farmers. We're invited to see their work firsthand. So this is the luwak? Yeah. Ah, well, it's tight. Legs or neck? The neck. Gosh. The capture of the luwak using these simple homemade wire traps is the start of a long chain of people making a profit 
out of the Lewak. The profit made from captive Lewax doesn't end with farmers and their collectors. 500 kilos of the animal coffee is being prepared at this battery farm. It's been sold to one of Indonesia's global exporters. Retailers that sell Indonesian kopi luwak do not claim it's produced by droppings collected from the bottom of dozens of cages containing distressed luwaks snatched from the rainforest. Alan Bates is an animal welfare lawyer for Moncton Chambers in London. The main responsibilities of the retailers are unfortunately limited to public health, of the safety of the products that they sell. Um, and also making sure that the products are properly described. So clearly if the retailer is describing the product as from wild Luax, uh, when actually it's from Luax that are kept in these uh, really intensive farms, then uh, there's a legal responsibility on the retailer there. Now of course, uh, when you're dealing with a commodity like coffee, it's very difficult to do that in practice because you're buying um, a commoditized product it looks the same whether it's from uh, farmed luwak or from wild luwak. So it's going to be very difficult for the retailer. Still posing as a British coffee importer, I have a meeting with a source of captive kopi luwak in Takangon. We're told there are 60 animals producing a consistent supply here. The owners claim the quality is so good and reliable, they have a big name client. Okay, do they buy a lot of luwak from you? Sari Makmur's kopi luwak is exported to retailers across Europe and the Far East. Oh, uh, does he? Yeah. What, just to inspect the coffee? So is Kopi Luwak produced from civets in captivity, ending up on the global market? We need to meet with the exporters. Former coffee trader Tony Wilde has helped us arrange a meeting with Sari McMoore. 340 kilometers away at their privately owned Wahana estate near Sidi Kalang. Convinced we're interested in doing business, Sari McMoore invites us to see their own plantations and production line on the company's privately owned estate. Then, after a tour of Wahana, a meeting with the vice president, Andre Spranoto. It's war, of course it's war. But Mr. Spranoto explains Sari McMoore has two Luwak products. The first comes from collectors and independent farmers in Takangon, called Wild Luwak. How do you make sure that they only give you wild? Oh, oh um, well, seriously speaking, I cannot guarantee that it is wild Luwak because uh, uh, we, we also never check that. Um, one thing we can be sure is that uh, these collectors will be collecting from a lot of smallholders farmers. Right. But to guarantee that that it is wow, I don't know. I cannot. I cannot say that it is. It is guaranteed. Of course, he's unaware we've filmed on a battery farm that claims to sell direct to Sari McMoore. But the vice president's admission they can't guarantee it's wild kopi luwak is perhaps an attempt at some honesty. When we contacted Sari McMoore to inform them they'd been investigated by the BBC, they responded by saying, We do ask farmers before we buy if it is wild luwak, and they claim that it is. And they confirmed once again that we cannot 100% guarantee whether it's caged or not. The company even admitted, We are not keen on selling this wild luwak, as we cannot control it. Every day we will have poops found in the Wahana area. Next, we're told they have a premium product, they claim, made from droppings from wild luwaks that wander freely onto their Wahana estate. 
every day we will pick the poops out. No matter, no, because we have about like 300 workers working in the farms, just picking the coffee only. Yeah. It's this premium product, after a long supply chain, that ends up on the shelves of one of the world's most famous department stores, Harrods. Uh, but with Wahana, you can say. Because yeah. in Wahana, we, 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 we found the poops in the, right. in, the, in the farms, and we can make sure that it is there. So the, because it's your own farm, yes. you can guarantee yes. the wildness. They're never in any kind of enclosure. Okay. It's no. literally, they're in the jungle. Yeah, in the jungle, they come out during the night time, they eat the cherries, and then they just like, you know, poop everywhere. Right, right. right. But these photos, taken in December 2010, show a different image. Civic cats on the Wahana estate, in some kind of enclosure. The importers we have spoken to, who have toured the Wahana estate, were not shown any captive civic cats, and neither were we. We spoke to one of the workers on the estate. He claims the Luwaks are happy and well cared for. He doesn't want to be identified. We put each Luwak in their own space. The space is two by one and a half meters, and the cement floor is cleaned and hosed every day. In their response to the BBC's investigation, Sari McMurr later admitted they do have a civic cat enclosure on their Wahana estate, but they say for scientific research. In our caged civic cats program, we study the animal behavior, diet, and its breeding behavior. We breed our own civic cats and then release them in our farm when they're mature enough. We do not sell any of the coffee beans from the caged luwak, as it is against our business model. The production and supply chain are so complex. It's impossible to be confident caged civets are not used to make products on sale in Harrods and other department stores. But what does the well-known retailer of Sari McMurr's premium product make of our findings? And the fact Sari McMurr keep caged civets out of sight of Western visitors. Harrod said their UK supplier of Sari McMurr's Kopi Luwak has given them Every assurance the coffee we are provided with is organic and comes from wild palm civets. The statement added they were working with the UK supplier and will investigate the evidence from this programme. If necessary, we will review the sale of this product. Back in Takangon in northern Sumatra, we've met a different exporter. But we're about to get a taste of how ruthless the Kopi Luwak trade can be. It's 4.30 in the morning and it's just become terrifyingly clear to all of us that we have hit a raw nerve. Our driver claims he's been threatened by two men, one with a gun, the other an agent for the exporter. Our driver says they insisted we only do business with the agent and no one else. For our safety, we decide to leave Takangon and we're followed as we do. Uh, jadi dia langsung dia mengatakan jangan sampai pistol ini dor muka saya pucat karena ancaman seperti itu muka pucat dan berkeringat. Disitulah sepertinya akhir dari hidup saya. The poachers illegally snatching luwax from the wild. The farmers confining the animals to a miserable existence. The collectors offering alternatives. This is wild. And this is captive Kopi Luwak. The exporter that keeps animals in hidden enclosures, unable to make guarantees. Wow, I don't know, I cannot, I cannot say that it is, it is guaranteed. Coffee can be a ruthless and competitive industry that relies on trust along every part of the supply chain. So I'm just looking at the four Smart. caged luwaks. Uh, it's really not a very pleasant sight at all. I just In fact, it's horrific to think that my so little best, innocent yeah. story led to the development. It's a boom, an extraordinary boom. 
of effectively what is now an industry based upon wild animals being kept in these kind of conditions. The cages are horrible. Here's a poor beast who's trying to sleep on the hard wire at the bottom of the cage. Here it's even worse than a concentration camp. It's really hideous. Hideous to see. It's all nonsense. Absolute nonsense. It's an outrage. People ought to do something about this and the people who can do it are the consumers. <laughs>